we're here, we're women, we're delving into a, an area that's traditionally dominated by men, and we're excited to forge a new path and bring some new flavors to the market. I think that we're mostly known for having really good products and for the fact that we're women-owned and operated. Uh, that being such a unique factor in this industry with less than 1% of the world's distilleries owned and operated by women, that's something that people really like about our story that makes them feel some sort of way. Welcome to Freeland Spirits. We like to begin our tour here uh, in the hallway. This, this mural acts as an infographic of our origin story and we like to begin here with Mima Freeland. And we grew up in Texas and Jill spent a lot of time in Mima's garden growing up. Mima never had to drop a booze, but what she did teach Jill is that all good things come from scratch. So it's really one of our tenants here at Freeland. We get, to, we get to talk about our favorite cocktails. Like ginger okay. mules. Oh uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Ginger mm -hmm. beer. We're all about transparency. We are, and we, we are happy to have a beautiful sourced bourbon uh, to work with. There are so many challenges with a new distillery. And with whiskey, your number one challenge is time. So in order to have a whiskey to release whenever you're starting, um, oftentimes you'll look for a high quality product. Um, and, and we did that. Jill sourced a beautiful uh, three and 12 year bourbon that we were able to bring here in barrel and finish in some Pinot Noir barrels. So our goal was always to, this is a means to get Oregon grown grain to glass whiskey, which is our future. Um, but for now, we're really proud and happy of this delicious bourbon that we have to work with and to be able to finish it and some of these incredible barrels from producers uh, nearby with Pinot Noir is really exciting to add that little element of Oregon terroir to a Southern style of whiskey. There's a lot of excitement right now with, um, we're really seeing a resurgence of regional spirits. Uh, back in the day before Prohibition, there were, they were all regional spirits. Everybody was making spirits from what was being grown in the area. And then after Prohibition, it was all big brands that really dominated the market and took over. So it's really exciting to see these expressions of regional agricultural products and creating all these different spirits. It's really almost a way to, uh, to travel without leaving your home. You can just open a bottle and experience all these local interesting flavors. So our flagship product, our first product, is Freeland Gin, and it is a gin that's made with 19 different botanicals, five of which are done with a vacuum distillation apparatus, and that really helps to preserve these five very fresh ingredients that are local in their natural form. Combined with a heated 14 different botanicals, it really makes it a well-rounded and beautiful gin that's easy to sip all by itself, or is really good in cocktails as well. The beautiful bourbon that we've been discussing, that was our second spirit that we released into the wild. It's our first whiskey release and just a, the first project towards a number of different barrel finishes and then our own Oregon grown rye that we're very excited about. The next one we released was our Geneva and that is a, uh, if you can think of rye whiskey and gin having a baby, this is it. Um, it is our rye whiskey base and we distilled that with seven different botanicals, including hazelnuts and juniper, to really make something that is um, a local spirit made with great organic grain, um, and it drinks really well. The biggest thing to remember with this, that while it is a gin, it also drinks more like a whiskey, so cocktails stay away from tonic. But this is truly where all the magic happens. We're very thankful to have an incredible master distiller, Molly Troop, and this little still here is really where she did a lot of the research and development that led to our beautiful gin recipe. Uh, we use an interesting process that utilizes a dual distillation. So this piece of equipment is a rotovap. It is a vacuum still that allows us to distill fresh ingredients. We can collect vapors at a cold state and it retains all of those fresh and delicate aromas and flavors that you would lose in that heat distillation. There's always, always gonna be someone who doubts you though because you're a woman, that has happened many times. But I've had people question whether I'm actually the distiller or if I'm just the face of the company. And my response to that is, well, let me get my lab coat out and we can talk about azeotropes if that makes you happy. But this is, Freeland is um, definitely um, a project that we're really proud that women are in leadership in. So when the grain comes in on pallets, its first step is to go into our mash tun. And the step here is really to get all of those sugars accessible for fermentation. This takes a lot of work and each grain reacts really differently 
in the mash tun. So it requires different enzymes and different temperature water to make sure that all of it's actively being processed, getting those sugars ready for the next step. And these are our fermentation tanks. Once all of those sugars are accessible and ready for fermentation, we sprinkle in a yeast and allow them to do their magic. Yeast can be a little particular, so we have to make sure that they have all the enzymes to keep them alive and that they're at the right temperature so they don't die. And after this process is complete, we have a thick, chunky sort of sour beer, um, and it's ready to turn into whiskey. So then we come over into Hell So Hell earned her name over the years uh, with getting her into our distillery. Uh, Jill's family were big fans of Lonesome Dove, and there was a key character, the mayor that could not be tamed, Hell So this inspired us to name her. I think Molly's doing a great job of taming her personally. We're getting some really beautiful flavors out of her. Uh, but she is always an ongoing challenge with new surprises each day. But this is where then that thick sludge goes to turn into whiskey. This is our 500 gallon copper pot still that we imported from Germany. Um, this is surrounded by a steam jacket that heats it to the temperature that we can collect those vapors. So once the vapors are collected in the head here, they run through the top and over into the condenser. The condenser changes all of that vapor back into a liquid state. There is a column here that's surrounded by tubes of cooling water. And here we are arrived at a beautiful spirit. Now this is just the beginning with whiskey. The next step comes into the barrel. So we're actively laying down our rye whiskey, which is a blend of Oregon grown rye, buckwheat, and malted barley. And it's going into barrel where it's gonna rest for about three and a half years or until Molly decides that it's ready. So sustainability is very important to us here at Freeland. And one of the sustainability measures is over in the corner. There's a lot of wastewater in distilling and not just from the active uh, form of the spirit, but the cooling and heating that goes into the process. So what this piece of equipment allows us to do in that far corner is to cool down that water and then reuse it continually. So instead of sending it off as waste, we can reuse it again and again for that heating and cooling process. So at the end of the day, we have totes of the two different gin distillates that Molly blends together. And then we have all of our beautiful rye that we're laying down. And we have some resting pinot barrels over here with our bourbon that we're finishing. So wide variety of flavors resting under this roof and we're really excited about all the products that we're bringing to market this year. We think a lot of ourselves and where we want to be and how we get there. Uh, we do think of how other people have gotten there as well, look at different case studies, look at different successful distilleries, and look at our current competition as well. And the beautiful thing about Portland is everyone's very inviting, and the whole community in itself is uh, very understanding that when our distilling community does well as a whole, we all do better. I want to be able to walk into a bar in any major city in the world and, and order Freeland, ideally. Um, but you know, we have to get there small steps. Right now we're really focused on winning the West. We're excited to be in California and Washington and doing great here in Oregon. Um, but I definitely cannot wait to enter more and more states. While we do compete with those larger brands, we're also trying to do our own thing. I think that's really important for craft to continue to embrace is that we are smaller and that gives us a different ability to do different things and we need to run with that and see where that takes us.